Welcome to Simply Stylish DIY, where we take ordinary to extraordinary. Hey y'all! Welcome back to Simply Stylish DIY. Today, we will be making five very different and charming wood slice magnets. I think you're going to be surprised just how cute these turn out. These are all unique ideas that you can use to make your own one-of-a-kind creations. I'll also be showing you how you can use these as hanging decor and a lot of other fun ideas. So without further ado, let's get to crafting! DIY number one, monogram magnet with greenery. For this DIY, you'll need one of the uh, wood slices. You'll also need a roll of ribbon of your choice, uh, some greenery, a stencil, and a oil-based Sharpie. We're gonna start off today's craft with a uh, wood slice. All of today's DIYs uh, involve wood slices. We're gonna make these all into magnets, but they're all gonna be unique and different uh, with different techniques. This one I'm going to start with today is going to be a uh, monogram. Make sure that you get one of the wood slices out of the bag um, that is smooth because we're going to be using a stencil. I picked these stencils up on clearance at Hobby Lobby. I like this design um, because it looked more like an initial for a uh, monogram. So they are the stick-on kind. They do not stick on the wood slices, but you have to peel off that paper anyhow to get the uh, design underneath. Just take your hand and hold it when you um, fill in the uh, stencil. I'm going to use this oil-based Sharpie. It's just a fine tip. Uh, once you uh, have it placed in the middle of your wood slice, go ahead and start filling in the edges of the stencil. Make sure you take your uh, fingernails and hold that down so it uh, does not leak underneath it. And then once you have the edges, I go in and fill in the middle. The uh, oil based Sharpie dries really fast. Once you lift that off, if you have any uh, places that you need to go back and fill in to uh, crisp up the uh, lines, just take your uh, pen and do that. I picked this Hampton Home brand garland up at Walmart. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do with it when I bought it, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to use it. It's 20 feet long, so I'm just going to clip off a little piece of it. I'm going to take it and measure it around and kind of use it like we're going to make this into like a wreath. Um, after you get the size that you need, take your wire cutters and clip that off. I'm going to take my fingers now and just kind of twist it a little bit and uh, get the wire more to the back side and the flowers to the front. So when we go to glue it on, it won't just be gluing the little leaves on, it'll actually be gluing the wire to it. I'm going to start gluing this on the edge at the bottom. So I'm going to put just the hot glue in sections so I can work it and hold it down. I'm going to take the center of that piece um, so we can work uh, from the center up. Take it and wrap it around where it is a wire it's easy to work with and hold that until it dries. Just do that in sections. Uh, do the sides and then uh, we'll get to the top. If by some chance uh, your leaves cover your uh, initial in the center, that's okay. We can take our scissors and clip that off. Once you get to the top, if you have any extra, if you measure too much, just take your wire cutters and cut that off, or you can just crisscross it at the top because we're going to put a bow there and it'll hide it anyhow. I just went in there at the top and um, where I crisscrossed it and put just a little bit more hot glue. Then I'm going to take my fingers and fluff up the leaves. Next, I'm going to take this black and white gingham ribbon. It's the uh, thin kind. I thought it would be cute just to tie a bow here to stick at the top. I'm just going to tie just a regular bow like I tie my shoes. I made the tails on this just a little bit long because I'm going to take those in just a second and glue those to the edge so it doesn't block the initial. But first I'm going to take the uh, tails and fold them over and cut them on a diagonal um, so I can have them dovetailed. Hot glue your little bow there to the top underneath the uh, greenery and then we're going to uh, take the tails and kind of pull them up a little bit to make a little loop and then put a, just a little small dab of hot glue uh, underneath one of the leaves and then take your scissors or anything that you want to hold it down with and uh, press it down and then you got a little loop in your bow and a little bit of decorative detail. Mm -hmm. 
Next I'm going to take one of these little round magnets. I got a whole pack of these in the craft section at Walmart. Uh, you can get these at Dollar Tree or any craft store. Um, I'm going to take off the back sticker of the magnets and then I'm also going to add a big gob of hot glue just so it's extra secure on the back. Okay, here's your finished product on the uh, first DIY. I think this one turned out really cute. It just reminds me of a uh, farmhouse little wreath. Um, you could put any initial, of course, in the center. You could also use a small little stencil and do a completely different design just to match your own decor and make this your own unique creation. DIY number two, Be Happy Magnet. For this DIY, you'll need another wood slice, some ribbon of your choice, some black chalk paint, also, you'll need a ultra-fine tipped white Sharpie oil-based, some little bead decor, and a little piece of greenery. For this DIY, we're going to start it off with a smoother uh, topped wood slice. Um, you're going to need it smooth so we can write on this surface. We're going to take our black chalk paint and just paint the inside, leaving a little bit of the uh, wood edge showing. Next, I'm going to take this ultra fine tipped oil based white sharpie and I'm going to write the words be happy, B E E happy, and I'm going to leave space to put something on the side. And after happy, I'm going to put three little dots. I've used this boxwood greenery in several of my DIYs and I had this little piece left over, so I'm going to take the two little bottom pieces and snip those off with my scissors and hot glue that to the top. Go ahead and put that uh, on the top without blocking your letters. I'm just going to tie another little bow with the black and white gingham. Uh, just make it tiny and uh, adhere it to the top with hot glue and uh, make sure that you don't block your writing. I picked this bag of little bees up. Uh, on Amazon. I loved how they had the little uh, rhinestones for their wings. They're an enamel bee and um, you can use these in jewelry or a multitude of different projects. I think there was 40 in the pack, but I'm going to take out two of those and put these on the front of our sign just to give it some uh, character. I went ahead and laid them in the position I wanted to put those, and then I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on their wings because that's where the uh, high point was, and attach those to uh, our magnet. Next, I'm going to take one of the round magnets out of my pack, put some hot glue on the back after I move the little sticker, and adhere it to the back, um, putting it about a third of the way down, not in the center. You could make this a hanging sign by taking the twine and uh, putting it on the back. It would also be really cute to uh, stack some beads in black and yellow and uh, hang them by that. Okay, here's your finished product. I just loved how this one turned out. I think it turned out so cute. Um, you could make this your own unique creation by writing, be happy, be kind, busy as a bee. You could change it out and do ladybugs. You could do all kinds of fun things with this. Just uh, enjoy it because it looks so cute with it written on the chalkboard. Yeah, why number three, bluebird with feathers magnet. Okay, for this fun little DIY, you're going to need a uh, wood slice, some chalk paint, and acrylic paint colors of your choice. I'm going to use a little wood biscuit for the wing. You also need a uh, oil-based Sharpie, um, some ribbon, and also a bag of feathers. You don't need to choose a uh, smooth-sided uh, wood slice for this one because all wood slices, if you buy them in the bags, like at Hobby Lobby or any craft store, they all have different textures. So you just need to go through the bag and pick the kind that's going to work for your project. I'm going to use this Bahama Blue uh, acrylic water-based paint, and I'm just going to shake it real good. I was about out of it, so I'm just going to take what was left in the bottom and squirt a, a big dab in the center because I wanted to make sure that I got that blue color, and this wood soaks in a lot of the paint when you first start painting it, and you don't get the true color, so I'm just going to um, keep painting it over until uh, I get the color I want. Just leave a wood edge on the side just to give it a little bit of character. Next, I'm going to use this little wood biscuit. It's number 20. I used uh, these in another DIY project. I'll link it in the description box below and you can see how I use these to make flowers, but I'm going to take it to use for the bird wing. 
and paint it with chalk paint in the color of ivory. If you do not use the wood biscuits, you could just cut out a piece of cardboard at this point and use that for a wing. I just love these feathers. I found these at Hobby Lobby for $1.79. It's an entire bag of guinea feathers. They have the little uh, polka dot design on the ends. I thought this would be so cute to use in uh, several upcoming DIYs. So I'm going to pull out two of the uh, teal colored um, feathers so we can use this for the uh, bird's tail. I picked a longer one and a shorter one. Here I'm just trying to decide if I want to take the shorter one and put it at the top or the bottom. Uh, just uh, It's just personal preference, whatever you think looks best. I'm going to take the hot glue, put it on the back of the uh, wood slice and position the feathers um, out the back of the bird. Next, I'm going to uh, decide the position of the little bird wing. I didn't know if I wanted to put it down like it was sitting or hold it up like it was fine. So I uh, decided just to stick it in an upward position and put the um, glue on about three quarters of it and have it hanging off the top a little bit. Next, I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to make a bird beak. So I decided to get the uh, orange ribbon that I had from Easter. And I'm just going to snip off a little piece of that. And then I'm going to cut a triangle um, with the side that has the wire. So I can take that part and glue onto the wood slice and then hang off the other little part to be its little beak. We're going to take our hot glue there, run it on that, and just turn it over and hang it off the edge. So I'm just going to take my oil based Sharpie and uh, make a little dot here for the bird's eye. Now I'm going to take the ultra fine tip Sharpie in black and go around the uh, wing and just kind of make stitch marks just to give it some character. I did the same thing with the um, marker and was going to try to do the stitch marks around the outside of the um, bird, but it did not look good. So I'm going to take a paintbrush that is stiff and I'm going to dip it into my uh, black chalk paint and go around and do stitching with it. Just don't press too hard because then it will spread out the stitching. This way it just looks like there's black stitches all the way around just to give it the same character that the little wing had. This just gives you a different idea how you can do stitching if you don't have a uh, one of the ultra fine tip pins and you want to do it with just paint. It's just fun to do it different ways to learn new ideas. I'm going to take the uh, ultra fine tip in white and just put a little dot in its eye just to give it a little pop. Next we're going to do the same thing. Just remove that little piece of uh, paper off your magnet, put some hot glue on it, and put it on the back about a third of the way down. Okay, here's your finished product on this one. It was awful fun to make. Uh, you can change out the color of your feathers and the color of your paint, and you can have all kinds of fun little birds and do a whole little set for your refrigerator or make them any kind of hanging decor. DIY number four, bird on branch with scarf magnet. For this simple little DIY, all you'll need is a wood slice, some pit berries, a little wood cutout bird, and a magnet. I found this little pack of wood pile uh, birds and branches. There's eight in the pack for $1.99 at Hobby Lobby. I thought these would be so cute for upcoming projects. So I pulled out one of the little birds that was inside. There's different designs and also different tree branches. Um, but I picked out this one. It's kind of in the shape of a cardinal. Um, and I thought I debated whether I wanted to leave it plain or paint it. So I decided to just go ahead and leave it plain. It had an imperfection on the back side. So I'm gonna turn it over and use the other side. And um, this part is optional if you wanted to paint it. That would be great if you wanted to stain it. I had this little rustic little um, pick in my stash. So I thought I would take a piece of the uh, wired edge of the pit berries and cut that off. So I'm just going to use the burgundy part. I wanted to wrap it around this ink pen here just to make it have like a twirled effect. And then I'm going to go ahead and snip that branch off. And that's what we're going to use for the little branch for the bird to sit on. A lot of these bags of wood slices that you get come with uh, imperfections in the uh, wood. And uh, if you're going to use these as coasters or you need them to look perfect, uh, just pick those out first. This one didn't have any of the bark around it except at the bottom, which I thought really made it pretty. So I thought this would be a perfect place to uh, use it to make a magnet for the little bird to sit on. And it looks kind of like it's in a nest or in a tree branch the way it is. And then it's bare around the other top of the edges. 
I'm going to go ahead and bend this piece of wire that I cut off. I'm not going to glue it anywhere but here at the bottom where I'm going to set the little bird. I want it to look like it was kind of 3D effect anyhow and this worked perfectly. I'm just going to work with the little twirls and make sure I have the little pit berries turned the way I want them before I glue it on. And then once you have everything in place just go ahead and put some hot glue underneath your branch and hold that in place until it dries. And then we're going to do the same thing with our little bird. I'm going to lay it on top of the branch after it dries to see where the uh, glue needs to go on the back of the bird. Once I figure that out, I'm going to put that on the back of the bird and attach it to the branch. This little rustic pick had little pieces of burgundy uh, gingham tied to it. So I'm just going to untie a piece of it and use that kind of like a little scarf for the bird's neck. So I'm going to take it, wrap it around and tie it in a little knot. And then I'm going to take those little tails, pull them down, and put a little dab of hot glue under them so it holds them in place. Now we're just going to tell you the same thing. Take that little piece of paper off and glue the magnet to the back. If your uh, magnet is not heavy, you can put it in the center. It's just easier to put it in the, uh, about the third of the way up. And the same thing here, you can use a piece of twine and tie that in a knot, glue it to the back and use this as a hanging decor. You could string beads on the top too and make it so cute and use it. Actually, you could put it around a, a vase or put it on a tear tray. Okay, here's your finished product on this one. I just loved how it turned out using the uh, imperfect wood that's in the bags. Uh, there's always uses for everything that you get. You just have to figure out what you want to do and use those for. I kind of just stick things like that aside and then uh, the perfect project comes along and you can uh, use that and turn it into your own unique creation. Okay, DIY number five, painted watermelon magnet. For this fun and easy DIY, you'll need one of the wood slices. you also need paint in black, green, red, and white, and a little magnet for the back, and a paintbrush. I'm just going to lay this on a, a piece of wax paper, and that way I can put my paint on that while I'm working. I'm going to start out with this red paint. I'm going to put a little bit on my wax paper and start painting the um, center. I'm going to leave um, a little bit of room on the edges because I'm going to put a uh, white and green in that too. I figured it would be easier to paint the center uh, first and then work uh, my way outward. I didn't want to do the white line next beside the red because I didn't want to bleed together. I wanted to give it time to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and take this Christmas green and uh, put a little bit on my wax paper. Take another brush and uh, dab it in it and go around just the edges just to put that green uh, line for the watermelon. This dries really fast. I'm going to take my white now um, and I'm just going to shake it really good. Any kind of uh, lids that screw off like this, I just like to shake them, get it onto the top of the lid and use that instead of having to squirt it out on my wax paper. And then I always take my brush and scoop it back in and put it in my bottles, what's left over, not to waste it. So this just keeps you from having to do all those steps um, if you can use it in the lid to begin with. So I'm going to take my brush and um, use a small brush and go in the um, between the red and the green just to give it a little uh, pop stripe. Next I'm going to use some black chalk paint. I'm going to do the same thing, shake it really good so I can use what's in the lid and just screw the lid back on and I have to put it back into the bottles. I'm going to take uh, this pointy um, paintbrush and dip it into uh, the black and try a few um, seeds on my wax paper first so I know what kind of design I want to go for here. So I did a couple of just straight lines. I didn't like the looks of that and then I realized I wanted to put like a little dab at the top and then stretch it almost like a comma. Uh, so that's what I decided to go with to make the little seeds all the way around. I'm just going to take them around in a circle around the uh, outside edge of the red and then I start coming into the inside. Now this just looks like a, a fresh cut watermelon and I'm going to do the same thing putting my um, magnet on the back. Go ahead and glue that on. This would be a really cute place to, um, to get some colored beads and reds and greens and white or you could just use natural colors and string that onto the twine before you glue it on. If you do not want to glue it on you could take a little drill and drill a hole on the top and then tie it off in a knot in the back. I just thought it would be easier to just glue it on especially if you were not going to have a lot of weight on the end. You can make several of these in different kinds of fruits to uh, hang on your refrigerator or to give as a gift. 
Okay, here's your finished product on this one. I think it turned out so cute and just uh, screams summer. This would be so pretty uh, to uh, decorate with all year long. You could um, make lemons, oranges, uh, all kinds of different fruits to put with it and uh, have an entire set. Okay, here's just a look at all of our magnets together. I think these turned out so unique and different. It just gives you a, a variety of ways that you can make these and uh, change up little things and make them your own uh, unique creation in each one of them that you can do. If you do any kind of uh, craft shows or um, farmer's markets, these would be so cute to make and personalize and take uh, to sell for things like that. They would also be cute to make and give us a gift set for uh, someone special in your life. Thanks for crafting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed these five unique wood slice magnets. If you did, please like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any upcoming crafty content. Also, leave me a comment down below to say hi and let me know which one of today's DIYs was your favorite. Until next time, happy crafting! I enjoyed our time together. Thanks for watching. I linked another video here for more crafting inspiration. Be sure to check it out. Have a great day!